This is the Midget Calculator made by Leishman Arcoscope and Supply Company in the 19-teens. Actually, this isn't a real one. I made this one myself. It looks like a ruler with markings on the bottom. The marks look pretty normal for a ruler, but if you look carefully, you see they get shorter as you go across. So this thing is useless as a ruler for measuring distances. It's built specifically for multiplying and dividing. Now, I know the word midget is considered offensive today by little people, so I got a new name for mine. I call it the Marmite Calculator. For some reason, that word was a popular name for adding machines. There was a tronce type device called the Marmite Adding Machine, and a pinwheel-style adder called the Brunsviga Marmite. As far as I can tell, the Marmite Calculator is very rare. It was just a plastic ruler made about 100 years ago, so I can understand why there aren't many around anymore. I hope you don't mind, I made my own. This is just printed out on some nice heavy paper. Actually, I made a clean image of the design so you can print it out just like I did. Check out the link down there. This Leishman company was founded by an inventor named Leroy James Leishman from Utah. He made something called the Arcoscope in 1916 when he was just a kid. Sort of a Frankenstein monster combination of a ruler in English and metric, plus a protractor, and some other weird things over here. And hey, look down here, it's a weird scaled ruler, just like the Marmite calculator. Speaking of Frankenstein, here's an amazing picture of Leishman, he's on the left, with Boris Karloff, the legendary Hollywood actor who played Frankenstein. This picture was taken later on in Leishman's life when he was working in TV and film. I got this photo from a book. Somebody actually wrote a whole book about Leroy Leishman, inventor of the Arcoscope and Marmite calculator. It's called The Forgotten Genius. And it's written by his daughter, Dorothy Varney. I wonder if she's got a box of Arcoscopes up in the attic somewhere. Anyway, let's look at this thing. The scale compacts as you go across. Like, the distance from 10 to 11 is much longer than the distance from 99 to 100. Actually, 99 is so close to 100, it isn't even marked. This weird scale is what makes it work. I guess it would have to be the weird scale that makes it work, since that's really all this thing is. You use it for multiplying and dividing, and it's a little magical. Let's say I want to multiply 11 times 15. You get your Marmite calculator and a piece of paper. You mark off the 10 at the beginning and the 11, which is your first number to multiply. Now you slide the ruler to the left so that the 15 is now where you marked the 10. And then read the number above the other mark that you made. I read something like 16.5. And this is the answer. Uh, you need to decide for yourself where the decimal point should go. So the answer could be 16.5 or 165 or I guess 1650. But you were doing 11 times 15, so just by common sense you should know it's 165. The accuracy of this is limited by the scale here. For some numbers, you won't really be able to tell exactly the answer. Like, here's 18 times 29. I mark the 10 and the 18. And slide to 29 and look at the other mark. A little bit past 52, so the answer is something a little bigger than 520. You can also do this on the other side of the scale, like to do 52 times 39, I mark at 152 and then slide to the right to 39 and read the mark. It's about 20.3, which means the answer is around 2030. It's pretty great and a lot of fun for the kids. And it's not too hard to see why it works if you remember a little high school math. Actually, just one fact from high school math. See, on this weird scale, the numbers are all there in order, but they're not positioned in the usual way. They're positioned according to their exponents. See, the two ends are 10, which is 10 to the power 1, and 100, which is 10 to the power 2, and all the other numbers are positioned according to their exponents, which are between 1 and 2. So the number right in the middle is actually 10 to the power 1.5, which is about 31 and a half. Three quarters of the way down should be 10 to the 1.75, which is about 56. You get the idea. And here's the one fact you need to remember from high school. When you want to multiply two numbers like this, you add the exponents. The point is that multiplying two numbers is the same as adding their exponents. Now the scale on the Marmite is in terms of exponents. So when you do this marking and sliding, really you're adding those distances together. So you're adding the exponents. 
like when I did 11 times 15, I marked the distance from 10 to 11. Then by sliding it over and looking up 15, I'm adding those two distances together. And adding the exponents is the same as multiplying the original numbers. Actually, I have a great idea to make this even better. What if I had two of these things right next to each other? Then instead of marking off a point and sliding over, I can just slide the two rulers alongside each other, like to do 11 times 15. I'll slide the top one over to 11, and then look at the 15 on top and read it on the bottom. If you could somehow stick two of these together and make it so one of them can slide back and forth, you could use this without making any marks on a piece of paper. You could even operate the whole thing just holding it in your hand and sliding one piece around. I bet you never thought of that, Leroy. Actually, I'm sure Leroy had thought of that. It's called a slide rule, which is just two sliding logarithmic scales. So what Leroy really created in the Marmite is a slide rule that doesn't slide. The result is something that requires a bit more setup to use with the mark and the points on the paper, but the device itself is considerably easier to manufacture. It's got no moving parts, doesn't need special low friction materials. Slide rules back in the day were typically made of ivory, which would have been much more expensive than whatever Leroy was using. Calling this thing the Marmite calculator is an interesting choice. Today we're used to the word calculator. You know, it's what we call a machine which does calculations. Something that calculates. But the Marmite calculator isn't a machine at all, and it doesn't actually do anything. It has no moving parts, and nothing about it is really interactive at all. But still, you can use it to calculate things. So when you multiply something with the Marmite, where does that calculation actually happen? Nothing's happening inside this ruler here. The truth is, the Marmite is not the calculator. The calculator is you.